doctoral scientist at uh, Zizang University, uh, which is affiliated to uh, Edinburgh University as well, and uh, in the beautiful city of Hainan in China. So, but I am in India now. So, my talk will be on the topic which I am working on or doing research for the uh, past eight years, which is on a uh, battery phase therapy. So my uh, topic will be on the future of phase therapy in the era of antibiotic resistance. So the content of my presentation will be on the antibiotics. We'll be discussing about the discovery of antibiotics uh, then and now, and I will be uh, discussing about the problem of antibiotic resistance. Then I will be moving on to uh, discuss about uh, bacteriophages and how these bacteriophages can be used uh, in a therapy and how phase therapy works and the future of phase therapy and in between I will be discussing about uh, about some of my works on antimicrobial resistance and uh, bacteriophage therapy as well. So coming to antibiotics, so as we all know antibiotics are drugs used to prevent and treat bacterial infections. So antibiotics are used only to treat bacterial infections, not any other viral infections. Make a note. So the discovery of uh, antibiotics dates back to 1928 when uh, Fleming introduced uh, penicillins. So we, we started using antibiotics uh, then on and there were a lot of discoveries after that. So some of the notable antibiotics being discovered after that is uh, in 1948, we have a cephalosporin a class of antibiotic being discovered, uh, which is uh, even used as a broad spectrum antibiotics nowadays. And the other important antibiotic uh, class which was discovered in uh, 1976 was uh, carbapenems, which uh, I, I did most of my research on. Uh, carbapenems are uh, one of the last to resort antibiotics uh, used to treat these uh, antibiotic resistant infections nowadays. So uh, as you see, after its initial discovery in uh, 1928 by Alexander Fleming, we have a lot of antibiotics being discovered. And after the 1990s, there is a big void in the discovery of antibiotics, which means that this uh, bacterial uh, pathogens which are being introduced to all these antibiotics are having enough time to uh, develop a resistance. So we have to overcome this big void in antibiotic discovery by using uh, some other alternative therapy. So how this antibiotic resistance uh, develops? So uh, if you see this uh, uh, in initial introduction of Alexander Fleming in 1928-29, by uh, which is a penicillin, you see a lot of antibiotics being discovered you see, in 1948, penicillin-resistant staphylococcus uh, being reported. So it is not that antibiotic resistant is a problem of uh, 21st century. So we, we can see antibiotic resistant being developed in uh, 1948 itself. Again, if you see, when methicillin uh, was introduced in 1959, again, you see within two years, uh, in 1961, methicillin-resistant staphylococcus or is being uh, reported. So MRSA is uh, one of the uh, very biggest thread in uh, Southeast Asian countries nowadays. So if you see these uh, bacteria are uh, very intelligent and they are evolving uh, resistant to these antibiotics very, very soon. Then after that, we have a very small number of antibiotics being discovered in 1980s. Then again, in 2001, World Health Organization declares uh, antimicrobial resistance as a global public health concern because uh, a lot of uh, antibiotic uh, resistant bacterial infections being reported throughout the globe. And again, in 2015, a very interesting uh, report on uh, cholestine resistant was first reported in uh, China. Uh, which uh, holds a uh, co uh, cholestine resistant gene, which is bound to plasmids, which is a very, very important uh, improvement in antibiotic resistance because these cholestine are one of the uh, last resort antibiotics being used to cure uh, infection caused by antibiotic resistant bacteria. Uh, so at this rate, according to a World Health Organization report, uh, at this rate by 2050, we will be uh, we will be having a large number of people being infected by this uh, antibiotic resistant bacterial infections and uh, the, uh, the deaths are approximately will be around uh, 10 million. So these antibiotic resistance are one of the biggest threat to the globe now. So antibiotic resistance is uh, one of the dangerous and highly uh, emerging uh, uh, infections in the world now. New antibiotic resistant mechanisms being discovered in all the bacteria. We can't say a particular set of bacteria is developing resistant and it is being evolved or it is being uh, 
a trans a transmitted between different bacterial species no every bacteria is developing a new new antibiotic resistant mechanisms and if you see most of the uh, infections that are caused by bacteria are coming under this antibiotic resistant category and some of the uh, infections are impossible to treat nowadays so the emergence and spread of uh, resistance is uh, global there is no country in the world which has an exception for this antibiotic resistant issue maybe we can say some countries are uh, having uh, pathogens that are very common in animals but not in humans uh, but in countries uh, like uh, china and india we have uh, highly uh, pathogenic antibiotic resistant bacterial infections in both animals and in humans and uh, we are we are almost in the post antibiotic era uh, in which we can't cure uh, uh, bacterial infections using the available antibiotics we are almost reaching that stage now so we we, we want to go for uh, alternatives now uh, for which uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria can be cured so what causes antibiotic resistance so overuse of antibiotics is one of the main reasons why this antibiotic resistance is evolving and uh, the other issues is uh, patients not taking antibiotic as prescribed by the physicians or uh, they are uh, they, they are uh, stopping the dosage in between as described by the uh, physicians so there is a huge amount of unnecessary use of antibiotics in animal farming particularly in india in india poultry use of of antibiotics are very very high you, you, you can say the similar concept in uh, china as well so the poor infection control in hospitals which causes uh, nosocomial infection or uh, hospital acquired infections the other important issue in highly populated countries is hygiene and uh, diagnosis early diagnosis of antibiotic resistant is also one of the important issue uh, in which uh, i am also uh, recently working on so antibiotic resistant how how this antibiotic resistance spread antibiotic resistant can spread in multiple ways one of the important ways how, by which this antibiotic resistant bacteria spreads is through animals uh, animals develop antibiotic resistant because we use antibiotics in the animal form so we eat the meat so this antibiotic resistance uh, bacteria jumps to humans and causes infection the, the other route of antibiotic resistant spread to humans is through uh, water system Uh, contaminated water system where a uh, uh, high amount of antibiotics are being discharged into river and uh, bacteria in the uh, river de develops antibiotic resistant and we take the same river water uh, for drinking then we develop uh, antibiotic resistant bacterial infections the other important source is in inside the hospital itself uh, so mishandling of antibiotics in the hospital develop antibiotic resistant bacteria so when we are uh, contacting with those uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria we develop uh, nosocomial infections or uh, a hospital acquired infection these are uh, some of the ways how by which uh, antibiotic resistant spreads to humans so coming to the uh, very important topic how this antibiotic resistant report is in india india is one of the largest uh, consumer of antibiotics we can say india is one of the largest manufacturer of antibiotics as well we are manufacturing lot of uh, antibiotics in india so which means lot of pharmaceutical companies are there again you, there will be lot of uh, discharges to the uh, rivers so again a bacteria develop resistance uh, whichever uh, bacteria gets contact with the humans we develop uh, resistant infections so the recent report in 2021 says we have 30% increase in the per capita use of uh, antibiotics uh, for the, in, in the past 10 years which means we are using large amount of antibiotics uh, which is, which is one of the important reasons why uh, the antibiotic resistant problem in india is very very high one of the, the one of the other points which we also have to notice we report lot of antibiotic resistant bacteria in india but most of them are not virulent pathogens means which won't cause uh, infections in humans or uh, that are not pathogenic this is also one of the important concept which which we which we studied and reported in 2017 18 uh, where we found lot of antibiotic resistant bacteria but most of them uh, do not have any virulent properties so india ranks first among all countries of the world in total uh, consumption of antibiotics for human use uh, 
maybe we can say that uh, India is one of the largest consumer of antibiotics for humans and uh, maybe China is one of the largest consumer of antibiotics in case of animal husbandry. So coming to these uh, reports on uh, on the Indian newspapers, you can see that uh, antibiotic resistant is one of the biggest threats to the human uh, lives in India because most of the uh, bacterial infections in the rural areas are being caused by antibiotic resistant infections and there is a huge spread of antibiotic resistant uh, infections in the uh, nasocomial environment as well. You can see uh, it was the report in 2017-18 you can see uh, e. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas and Asyntobacter all four are some of the uh, major or high priority pathogens in India which are becoming resistant to most of the available antibiotics including the last resort antibiotics Corbapenum and Colistin which is one of the serious reports from the Indian point of view. So both E. coli and Klebsiella are uh, Enterobacteria and uh, Pseudomonas and Asinto are non-fermenters you can see as this uh, bacteria are developing resistant the spread of this resistant bacterial pathogens will be uh, super fast because we, we don't have any uh, control actions to stop this uh, antibiotic resistant bacterial spread in uh, Indian environment. So World Health Organization has uh, given uh, alarm bells uh, to all uh, scientists around the world who are working with antibiotic resistant pathogens uh, in which they group this bacterial pathogens into different categories. Uh, priority one is uh, critical pathogens, which includes uh, gram negatives, Asyntobacter, uh, Pseudomonas, and uh, Enterobacteriaceae. Uh, the bacteria in the Enterobacteriaceae family includes Escherichia, Klebsiella, Salmonella, and Sigla. And again, in the priority two is a uh, high priority pathogens, which includes uh, most of the gram positives. And we have a priority three uh, medium uh, priority pathogens, which are uh, Staph, uh, Strepto, and Sigla. So there is an alarming warning from the world health organization to report this antibiotic resistant report from all parts of the world so that a immediate action can be taken so that a patient who are infected with this antibiotic resistant bacterial infections are cured immediately so coming to the recent report on uh, coronavirus and the secondary bacterial infections uh, in which uh, our research group involved in uh, many of the secondary bacterial infections report as well. Uh, if you see uh, out of 100%, 3.5% of the you know, patients who came for a coronavirus treatment are initially infected with the bacterial infection and out of which 14.3% are uh, infected within the hospital means due to nosocomial infections uh, you can see the seriousness of this uh, bacterial infections within the uh, hospital settings so uh, coming to this uh, chart at the uh, bottom here you can see uh, how how this uh, antibiotic resistant or a secondary bacterial infection has caused a serious uh, uh, infection in the uh, coronavirus patients uh, you can see that almost uh, According to my report, almost 7% of the overall uh, coronavirus patients are infected with secondary bacterial infections and at least 3.5% of them uh, have not been treated because they are infected with antibiotic resistant uh, bacterial infections. Uh, this uh, diagram here is uh, one of uh, the diagram from our publication in Frontiers in Medicine, which says that uh, antibiotics are given to coronavirus patients both in the uh, prophylactic stage and the therapeutic stage. Prophylactic stage is as soon as uh, patients get admitted to the hospital without even knowing whether a uh, patient needs uh, antibiotics or not. Uh, therapeutic use is when a uh, patient is uh, diagnostic, uh, diagnosed with uh, antibacterial infection and then uh, they are given uh, antibiotics. You can see lot of antibiotics being used during the coronavirus treatment and uh, maxofloxin uh, 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 everyone is using maxofloxin nowadays so maxofloxin is one of the common antibiotics you prescribed to coronavirus patients and uh, second is uh, azithromycin and we have uh, vancomycin for uh, staphylococcus aureus infections and uh, most of the bacterial infections are uh, gram negative uh, because these uh, respiratory uh, 
pathogenic infections are mostly bound with uh, gram negative such as pseudomonas and klebsiella even uh, staphylococcus aureus which is a gram positive pathogen also found in uh, many of the cases as well so which, which which is very clear that even during the coronavirus pandemic there is a big problem of uh, bacterial co infection uh, for the coronavirus patients and many of those uh, patients are being not treated properly because they are infected with antibiotic resistant bacteria so this antibiotic resistant Resistant issue issue is going to be there, and we have to find an alternative for this uh, antibiotic resistant bacterial infection. So this is a very interesting uh, report from the uh, uh, economist and the scientist from UK, which says that by the year 2050, we will we will be having many antibiotic resistant infections death than the cancer, which means that antibiotic resistant bacterial infection is going to have a major uh, mortality rate in the world than any other diseases by the year 2050 and no no continent is going to be accepted from this uh, antibiotic resistant uh, bacterial infection and uh, notably countries like china and india who are uh, mostly highly populated are going to have a major impact on this antibiotic resistant bacterial outbreak and if you see there is an there is an uh, staphylococcus aureus outbreak recently reported in uh, southeast asian countries like vietnam and thailand so there will be a huge problem due to antibiotic resistant outbreak in the upcoming days so we have to be aware and we have to use antibiotics very sensibly and antibiotic resistance uh, should be uh, given uh, more attention than any other uh, pathogens pathogenic infections so how, how to prevent this uh, antibiotic resistance antibiotic resistance is already there so it is very 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 highly impossible to uh, stop the uh, spread of this antibiotic resistant bacterial pathogens at this stage but in the future what we can how we can prevent this uh, we have to use antibiotics as prescribed by the physicians. We, we should not take uh, self antibiotics or we should not go and buy the uh, over the counter antibiotics from the pharmaceutical shops and uh, always follow your health workers that is a doctor's advice on how to take antibiotics and always complete the dosage of your antibiotic for example if a doctor is uh, prescribing you for uh, six doses of antibiotics you complete the six uh, dosage of antibiotics don't stop with four so that bacteria is introduced to antibiotics but they are not killed so that they develop antibiotic resistance in the next stage so this is, these are some of the ways how you can prevent uh, antibiotic resistance being developed so uh, this is an important chart released by uh, government of india a few years back whenever you see this uh, red line in the antibiotic strip you should not buy this and these antibiotics without a proper uh, doctor's prescription so this is a point to note here in india because a lot of uh, uh, pharmacies are selling antibiotics without a proper doctor's prescription so that we, uh, we it leads to antibiotic resistant bacterial development so whenever you see this red line on the uh, drug strip uh, make sure that you have a proper a doctor prescription before you buy that so coming to some of my research on the uh, antibiotic resistance side so this is uh, our first uh, report from uh, VAT lab in 2016 where we worked on carbapenem resistant gram negative bacterial samples collected from Tamil Nadu and again we worked on a uh, cholestine resistant gram negative bacteria in the same year uh, this is one of the very important publication in the Journal of Medical Microbiology in which we found that uh, mobile genetic elements is one of the important reasons uh, why this uh, antibiotic resistant is being spread in the nasocomial environment in the samples taken from uh, Tamil Nadu. And in, in this uh, report on uh, global antimicrobial resistant, we for the first time reported the uh, presence of Dutch imipinamase uh, resistant gene in uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa samples isolated in Tamil Nadu. So these are uh, very recent reports. Uh, this is uh, reports are published in Frontiers in Medicine, in which we completely uh, categorize the secondary bacterial infection in patients with viral pneumonia. Uh, the, uh, our report uh, is one of the uh, highly welcomed uh, report in the world to take a guarantee of how these secondary bacterial infections are occurring during uh, viral pneumonia. So coming to alternatives, what are the alternatives? What alternatives we can use to 
antibiotics so that we can uh, reduce the use of antibiotics so that antibiotic resistant uh, spread can be eliminated uh, the, the first uh, concept is the use of bacteriophages or the concept is called uh, phage therapy and a lot of other scientists are also working in novel drugs natural drugs isolated from uh, sea samples and uh, also on the bacteriocins so my area of research is completely on bacteriophages and uh, phage therapy uh, which i will be talking about in the upcoming slides. So phase therapy. Phase therapy is the use of live bacteriophages uh, to treat uh, bacterial infections. So, so bacteriophages, what are these bacteriophages? So bacteriophages are bacterial viruses or prokaryotic viruses. They infect, multiply inside the bacteria and they kill the bacteria. This is, this is, uh, this is how this bacteriophage life cycle works. So these bacteriophages are found everywhere. Uh, so this is, these are the most a uh, highly populated uh, microorganism in this uh, planet uh, wherever you find a bacteria there will be bacteriophages because these bacteriophages use bacteria as their host for uh, multiplication and living actually so wherever you find a bacteria you can find a uh, bacteriophages so bacteriophages can be either uh, have a, a dna or rna as their uh, genetic material and they may be single standard or double standard and uh, this is uh, uh, this is a simple structure of a bacteriophage which has a head uh, which has a nucleic acid either dna or rna then we have a tail and we have a tail fiber this is a basic uh, bacteriophage structure uh, which most of us uh, have seen and coming to the uh, discovery of bacteriophages uh, it was in 1915 uh, when uh, frederick what first identified some small agent uh, that infected bacteria and killed the bacteria but at that time uh, he, he he doesn't know these uh, small agents or bacteriophages but it was in 1917 uh, felix de herle first uh, introduced this uh, concept of this micro killing uh, bacteria using uh, dysentery samples uh, with uh, bacillus so it was in 1915 uh, which uh, which uh, clearly noted bacteriophages or the agents that kills a bacteria and these bacteriophages can be used in therapy to cure uh, bacterial infections so uh, from there on uh, the subsequent years like in 1920 and 1921 uh, felix started using uh, bacteriophages to cure uh, bacterial infections uh, caused by Escherichia coli, so that uh, in the subsequent years, uh, bacteriophages started developing slowly. So coming to this uh, flowchart, uh, which says how these uh, bacteriophages are being discovered, the, the first uh, report was in uh, 1896 uh, from the Ganges River water in India, uh, where uh, 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 scientist Hankin reported there is some antiseptic properties in this uh, Ganges River water, which has the ability to uh, cure uh, vibrio infections. So at that time, nobody knows that this Ganges River water is uh, 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 highly uh, populated with this bacteriophages which is the reason why this Ganges river water is curing infection caused by uh, bacteria. Uh, later in 1915 as I said earlier uh, what first discovered uh, or reported a small uh, 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 in small agents that are infecting bacteria and it was in 1917 uh, a clear view of bacteriophage was introduced and in the subsequent years you can see in 1940 the first electron microscopic image of bacteriophage was discovered and in 1977 and the first phage genome was sequenced uh, by using a Sanger sequencing so when you see the discovery of bacteriophages it takes a long time uh, to reach at this stage in uh, 2021 but there is a huge or uh, a slowness in the discovery of bacteriophages because of the introduction of antibiotics in 1929 because as i said earlier by by 1921 uh, dr felix used uh, bacteriophages to cure bacterial infections but in 1929 as soon as antibiotics being discovered the research on bacteriophages uh, went slow because antibiotics are one of the uh, 
uh, easy compound that can be used or uh, synthesized by these uh, pharmaceutical companies to cure bacterial infection, whereas the bacteriophages are complex and it will be very difficult for these uh, pharmaceutical companies to manufacture uh, bacteriophages against all the uh, bacterial uh, infections. Therefore, as soon as antibiotics being introduced, the discovery on the bacteriophages started uh, slowing down. So the golden age of antibiotics started in 1950 and as, uh, as a more number of antibiotics being used by the year 2000 uh, we came to the uh, post antibiotic era uh, in which uh, most of the bacteria started developing resistance against these antibiotics again the phage research started uh, uh, renewed in the year uh, 2000 Two, uh, where may, many of the researchers around the world or microbiologists around the world started doing research on bacteriophages uh, that can be used to uh, cure uh, bacterial infections. So in 2019, the first clinical trial on bacteriophages uh, was registered in a US patent office. Then it was a successful patent uh, and clinical trial. And in uh, 2017, the first personalized phage therapy uh, was uh, used to cure uh, infection caused by Acinetobacter. Uh, then later on, uh, bacteriophage discovery has started evolving, and now we are in the point that bacteriophages is being uh, studied from a sequence to sequence or from a nucleotide to nucleotide, where which a lot of proteins from the bacteriophages are even used as antibacterials, which we will be seeing in the uh, forthcoming slides. So, coming to the phage life cycle, so there are Two, two bacteriophage life cycle one is lytic and the other one is lysogenic so as soon as the bacteriophages gets absorbed to the bacterial outer membrane the bacterial uh, genetic material or uh, dna gets uh, inside a bacteria so at this stage now uh, either a bacteriophage as goes to a lytic cycle or it goes to the lysogenic cycle in the case of lytic cycle the bacteria uh, the bacteriophages gets multiplied immediately inside the uh, bacteria and, uh, and and the huge number of uh, bacteriophages are being released from the infected bacteria this is how the lytic cycle works and in the case of lysogenic cycle once the uh, phage dna gets inside the bacteria it gets integrated into the uh, bacterial dna uh, which is called a prophage at this stage the bacteria is called uh, lysogen then uh, bacteria multiplies along with this uh, prophage uh, these are called lysogens again uh, then at, at this stage we never know when these bacteriophages are going to uh, come out of this bacteria whether these bacteriophages are going to have a bacterial genome or whether they are going to have or hold any uh, bacteria dna as well so for phase therapy we always use uh, bacteriophages that follow a lytic cycle so uh, at the right is a simple lytic cycle where phages get absorbed attached or absorbed to the uh, bacterial outer membrane dna gets integrated then phages multiply and a uh, phage release happens so this is a simple lytic cycle which uh, are uh, used in uh, bacteriophage therapy so these are uh, some of the basic uh, lytic bacteriophages which we all know. So these are uh, T4 bacteriophages which comes under the family called Myoveridae. So they have a head and a tail and tail fiber and the other, other one is a lambda phage which comes under a family called Shipoveridae. So it has a head and tail, they do not have a tail fibers and the other one is T7 bacteriophages which uh, comes under a family called Podoveridae. So they have a small head and they, they either have a tail fiber or at some cases they do not have tail fibers. So these, uh, these images are a transmission electron microscopic images taken in my lab. So the top, I, I work with all this uh, three uh, family of uh, bacteriophages in, during my research. So the top is uh, phages belonging to a Cipoviridae family. You can see a head and a tail. They do not have tail fibers. Then we have a Podoviridae family, which has a head alone. We have, you can see a small tail here. And we have a Myoviridae bacteriophages, which has a, a long uh, tail fibers. 
So coming to the ICT week taxonomy classification of uh, bacteriophages, uh, I'm also a member of this uh, taxonomy committee. So the recent uh, classification, which uh, comes in uh, to 2021, uh, has grouped uh, this uh, cadaverals. Cadaverals is a uh, order of uh, bacteriophages which holds uh, DNA as their genetic material. So we grouped uh, this uh, group into uh, 14 families and uh, all this myoviridae, podoviridae and shipoviridae which I have marked in red arrows are uh, some of the very common uh, bacteriophages which we isolate and uh, see in uh, transmission electron microscopic analysis or uh, simply TIM analysis. So uh, at the recent stage we have 14 families. These 14 families are grouped only based on genomic analysis. Most of this uh, 14 families comes under either myoviridae Podoviridae or Shipoviridae based on their uh, morphological classification. All these classifications are based on a uh, genome. So coming to this bacteriophages, whether these bacteriophages are present inside the human body? Yes. Yes, these bacteriophages are present inside the human body. They are present everywhere where you found uh, bacteria. So they are part of our uh, human microbiome. Uh, the study of uh, viruses inside the uh, human body is called virome and uh, the study of phages inside the human body is called phageome uh, in which uh, I did uh, very very brief studies on uh, phageome on the uh, mother to fetus transmission of uh, bacteriophages. So, so bacteriophages are found in a human body right from the birth uh, in, in, in our research study, uh, which I will be explaining later, we found that bacteriophages are transmitted from mother to a newborn through a placenta. So during birth, bacteriophages are being transmitted from mother to fetus. So uh, right from the birth, you have a bacteria and bacteriophages transmitted from your mother. So there is uh, no reason uh, you, you, you are not going to have bacteriophages during your, uh, uh, during your growth. So at some point a lot of research says that uh, blood is very sterile and they do not have a lot of microorganisms but it was found that bacteriophages are present even in the human blood and a recent report from uh, Jeremy Bohr lab in Australia they found that these bacteriophages can penetrate the epithelial cells and the endothelial cells as well even they can cross the blood brain barrier uh, so, so that uh, bacteriophage therapy can be used to, to cure uh, infections even in the in the, in the brain. So, uh, these bacteriophages can penetrate any part in the uh, human body. So, coming to this uh, interesting virome chart, you can see uh, inside our human body there are a lot of novel bacteriophages are yet to be discovered. Even uh, a year back, we found a new bacteriophage a family inside a human body. There, is, there are a lot of novel bacteriophages which has to be discovered inside the human body. As, as a human body is, uh, has a huge mechanism, bacteriophages can evolve every day so that there will be a huge uh, classification of bacteriophages even inside the human body. Uh, so these bacteriophages are sometimes commensal. Uh, commensal in sense they adjust the bacterial environment inside the uh, human gut for example if you take a human gut there will there is a huge number of bacteria this bacterial population has to be maintained at a particular level so this bacteriophages helps in maintaining uh, that uh, beneficial bacteria at, at their level so these bacteriophages are called commensal bacteriophages so this bacteriophages has very interesting uh, uh, duties inside our human body as well so coming to the research focus, what, what, what research is going on in these bacteriophages? So the main concept on uh, phage research on bacteriophages is for a therapy using a bacteriophages itself for therapy. The other one is endolysins using uh, phage derived uh, proteins called uh, endolysins as uh, antibacterial agents. The other concept is using bacteriophages and antibiotics in combination to treat any bacterial infection. The other one is using uh, encapsulated phages. Uh, we can encapsulate phages in uh, some uh, nanoparticles and you, you can uh, uh, apply it in at the site of infection rather than uh, giving it through IV or IEM. So other, the other concept is using uh, synthetic phages. Synthetic phages are uh, the type of bacteriophages that are synthesized using uh, uh, test tubes. We have a phage DNA and you have a synthetic chemicals uh, and uh, 
we, we can synthesize bacteriophages inside the test tube. So engineered bacteriophages, engineered bacteriophages are one of the developing fields now, uh, which, uh, which I started working uh, three months back, where you engineer bacteriophages inside the lab so that this uh, specificity of the bacteriophages can be uh, made very broad where uh, bacteriophages are made to adsorb to different hosts inside the bacteria. So coming to the first concept, uh, phage therapy. So phage therapy is using bacteriophages to cure bacterial infections. And nowadays bacteriophage therapy is used to cure uh, multidrug resistant bacterial infections. A lot of success is going on around the world by using uh, bacteriophage uh, therapy. So there are two concepts on using bacteriophage therapy. One is personalized therapy. The other one is using uh, bacteriophage cocktails from the phage bank. Personalized therapy. Personalized therapy is is uh, when a patient gets admitted to a hospital, we diagnose a patient with a bacterial infection. We take the bacteria to our lab, which we, where we hold a lot of bacteriophages in our stock. So we test the patient sample, uh, means bacteria against the available bacteriophages. Whatever bacteriophage gets uh, infecting the uh, bacteria of interest, we, we take and purify those bacteriophages and treat a patient using uh, personalized uh, bacteriophage therapy. The other concept is using uh, phage banks, uh, which, which, which is being developed in VAT now. Uh, phage banks is collecting a huge number of bacteriophages, which causes uh, against a bacteria, which causes a very common infection in India. For example, uh, for example, in the strains, uh, in the Escherichia coli strains in India, which causes uh, infection and uh, Escherichia coli strain that uh, causes infection in UK or something different. So based on the uh, geographical location, this uh, Escherichia coli strains can be uh, distinguished. So based on the geographical location, this uh, phage cocktails uh, can be uh, developed so that as soon as uh, a patient is reported with a bacterial infection, these phage cocktails can be uh, used. Uh, these phage cocktails uh, sometimes works on those uh, patients, and there is, uh, I think, there is two percent failure on using um, bacteriophage cocktails from the phage banks. So this is how the bacteriophages act. As soon as bacteriophages enters the human body, it uh, it finds the uh, bacteria of interest. The very, very interesting uh, thing about bacteriophages is bacteriophages are very, very specific to bacteria. They can infect only a particular bacteria uh, which have a receptor for this bacteriophage. So they are very, very specific, which means they won't disturb other bacteria in our common cells. So for example, if we are uh, treating a Klebsiella uh, pneumonia infection using a Klebsiella phage, uh, a phage targets a particular Klebsiella pneumonia and it will kill that uh, Klebsiella pneumonia and it will be uh, excreted. So it won't uh, cause any other uh, problems in the uh, common cell bacteria in the surrounding unlike our antibiotics. So one of the major problem that we face nowadays in the A phase therapy is development of phage resistance. So as I said earlier, there is, a, there is a evolution happens in bacteria every time as bacteria develop resistance to antibiotics, bacteria can develop resistant against bacteriophages as well. So there is a uh, existing problem of uh, bacteriophage uh, resistance, uh, which is which, which, which one of the beautiful concept called a CRISPR, which was awarded a Nobel Prize last year, uh, which is one of the main uh, bacteriophage resistant mechanisms, which is used by bacteria. So uh, bacteria developing resistant to these bacteriophages is one of the uh, main issues that we are facing nowadays and we are finding ways to overcome this uh, phage resistant being developed in the uh, uh, hospital settings as well. So how these bacteriophages are administered? Bacteriophages can be administered in any way as like antibiotics either uh, through injection in uh, like IV or IEM and we can take it orally, we can uh, go for uh, topical applications and we can go for inhalation when there is uh, respiratory tract infections. So the, the penetration of these bacteriophages is very high, means blood penetration of these uh, bacteriophages is very high during uh, injection, either intravenous, intramuscular, intraperitoneal, or uh, subcutaneous. 
and in, during inhalation and the penetration percent is 66 percent and uh, penetration percent reduces during uh, topical and oral uh, application uh, during oral application the bacteriophage adsorption is not studied really well because there is a huge lack in uh, understanding how this uh, uh, bacteria, oral bacteriophages are being absorbed inside a human gut so i think there is a lack of understanding on how this uh, bacteriophage uh, bacteriophages that are given orally are being absorbed in the human gut so coming to the other other, other concept called a pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics so the, the biggest advantage of bacteriophages in the case of pharmacodynamics is bacteriophages are very very specific means bacteriophages have a very a particular host range so that they can infect only a particular set of bacteria so the disadvantage of uh, bacteriophage therapy in the case of pharmacodynamics is developing a phage resistant bacteria that are developing phage resistance will be a major issue when it comes to pharmacodynamic part coming to the pharmacokinetics part one of the biggest advantage for uh, bacteriophages is administration we can do administration like iv oral or topical or we can do any administration the other important concept which is being uh, studied nowadays is our own immune system developing antiphage antibodies inside our human body as soon as a bacteriophages enters uh, inside the human body during the treatment uh, the, the recent report shows that antiphage antibodies are generated in the human body within 24 hours of uh, uh, human treatment which is uh, one of the major problems during a bacteriophage therapy this problem has to be overcome by using different combinations of uh, uh, bacteriophages so that uh, we are introducing different bacteriophages so that our immune system will cannot or we, we, we are faking our uh, immune system so that uh, antiphage antibiotic antibodies are not uh, being uh, produced by our human immune system so that uh, bacteriophage therapy is a successful one so coming to the next concept called endolysins so endolysins are a phage derived enzymes that are used by bacteriophages during the lytic cycle to degrade the bacterial outer membrane for example uh, as i said in the lytic cycle uh, uh, bacteria back in the, the the synthesized bacteriophages inside a bacteria has to come out of the bacteria so at this stage the bacteria uses uh, endolysins which are uh, depolymerase enzymes uh, to degrade the bacterial outer membrane you can see in this chart in this uh, diagram here this bacteriophage has to come out of uh, the bacteria by uh, degrading the outer membrane so bacteriophages produces the enzyme called endolysins which degrades the bacterial outer membrane uh, in the case of both gram positive and gram negative in the gram positive the the endolysins are completely different because uh, gram negative gram positive outer membrane is uh, just uh, lipopolysaccharide in the case of uh, gram negative the endolysin uh, produced are something different from the uh, gram positive because uh, gram negative outer membrane is made up of uh, lipopolysaccharide along with uh, peptidoglycan uh, so the the diagram at the right this uh, beautiful picture from our publication i think in 2019 so you can see this uh, gram negative outer membrane is a gram negative uh, infecting bacteriophages is completely different from the one uh, from the gram positive one so the other concept is using a phage antibiotic combination so you can see uh, when you use uh, antibiotics bacteria develop resistant when we use uh, bacteriophages again bacteria can develop resistant so we mix both phages and antibiotics so that you are uh, faking the bacteria so either a bacteria has to develop resistant against bacteriophages or against antibiotics so that either bacteriophages will work or either uh, antibiotics can work so this is uh, the, the new concept uh, which 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 we are working recently and we found another very in interesting uh, concept within this that uh, sometimes when uh, bacteriophages are used against the antibiotic resistant bacteria these bacteria are developing resistant against the bacteriophage so at this stage bacteria are again getting resensitized to the old antibiotics this is a very interesting concept uh, which we worked recently and i think it will be published uh, very soon 
So comparing antibiotics, uh, endolysins and bacteriophages, this is a very important uh, part of uh, my research, which uh, I am working particularly. So these uh, antibiotics are always broad spectrum and uh, bacteria can develop resistant against this uh, antibiotics. Uh, and against endolysins, resistant is completely impossible during uh, endolysin therapy because endolysins are very, very specific. So bacteriophages are again uh, specific to particular bacterial infection and again bacteria can develop resistant to these uh, bacteriophages. So the availability, bioavailability of uh, antibiotics is uh, very high, which, can, which is almost comparable to endolysins. But in the case of bacteriophages, bacteriophages can multiply only in the presence of uh, this host bacteria. So the bioavailability of these bacteriophages depends on the availability of a host bacteria inside the human body. So every every treatment has uh, advantages and disadvantages. It depends on uh, how how personalized therapy works against a, a particular uh, human infection. So the other concept which I said is uh, phage encapsulation, which I, I'm not uh, working particularly on. As we see here, when we deliver bacteriophages, it may not reach the site of infection, but we but when we use uh, nano carriers, we can uh, deliver these bacteriophages, particularly at the site of infection. Uh, this is one of the main reasons why uh, uh, I think uh, Sanjay Chibber from uh, Punjab University is particularly working on this uh, phage encapsulation in India. And I think not many are working on this phage encapsulation around the world. So these are some of the other ways how these uh, bacteriophages can be encapsulated. They can be encapsulated in liposomes, uh, nanoparticles, uh, we can use hydrogels for uh, bacteriophage uh, encapsulation as well. So coming to genetically engineered phages, uh, which I am uh, working recently with my students, and uh, uh, the, the, the very basic mechanism that we use is a classical phage cross method where we use two different bacteriophages and uh, using a recombination, we develop a new combination of uh, bacteriophages so that uh, the, the whole range of bacteriophages is very broad. The other concepts is uh, developing uh, or introducing uh, phage resistant mutants or uh, using a donor plasmids where you can deliver a gene of interest uh, using a recombination mechanism to develop uh, recombinant phages. So one of the very, very interesting uh, developments in CRISPR system is to develop a T4 uh, phage engineering where you can uh, uh, select a CR RNA for uh, CRISPR and you, you, you select a donor insert, which is a reporter gene. This is a gene of interest. Then you, you introduce it into a bacterial cell so that as soon as a T4 bacteria phage uh, is infected, this uh, CRISPR uh, case cuts the uh, uh, gene of interest region so that uh, modified phage is being produced immediately. So this is one of the recent development in CRISPR case technology in the case of uh, bacteriophage uh, engineering. So coming to the phage therapy market, the phage therapy market is very broad nowadays. Uh, one of the main uh, phage market players in uh, bacteriophage research is uh, in uh, US, in India. Gangajan is one of the major uh, marketing uh, agents uh, who are particularly working on bacteriophages as well as in the endolysins. I think the endolysins produced by the Indian company Gangajan is in the uh, clinical trial stage three. So coming to this chart here, if you see a phase therapy market, phase therapy market is going at a much faster rate. By the year 2025, it is expected to cross the uh, antibiotic uh, market stage and at, at least approximately a six percent uh, increase in uh, market is expected by the year 2027 so this is one of the uh, very fast market developments in the case of uh, pharmaceutical companies so coming to a, a very interesting part of uh, bacteriophage market is uh, how these uh, uh, bacteriophages are are, are used to treat uh, two important uh, patients around the globe. Uh, this, uh, this, this one at the middle is a teenage girl uh, who got infected with a mycobacterium abscess infection, and uh, she cannot be cured using antibiotics. So, uh, a hatful lab from a US used a combination of uh, bacteriophages to cure the mycobacterium abscess infection. 
so the other the, the other major uh, outcome is in 2017 when uh, professor john was treated with uh, uh, bacteriophage therapy used for his uh, acinetobacter infection and uh, later uh, john's wife uh, dr stefani became a uh, ambassador for bacteriophage therapy and uh, i think uh, dr stefani has come to india a few years back to uh, to develop a bacteriophage therapy lab in uh, new delhi so bacteriophage therapy is one of the fastest growing market so bacteriophage therapy is available in india and whoever is infected with antibiotic resistant bacterial infections can make use of this uh, available antibiotic so that a patient can be uh, cured uh, against these uh, drug resistant and deadly infections so some of my research on uh, bacteriophages and bacteriophage therapy or uh, or on the like isolation and characterization of bacteriophages what what i usually do is i i select a pathogen of my interest and i collect uh, bacteriophages from the environmental samples so i characterize these bacteriophages both uh, genomically and uh, in, in the in the in vitro conditions so genomic classification of uh, this uh, bacteriophages is one of my research interest in the past one year so then i go for uh, animal studies uh, we use uh, different animal models to study this uh, efficacy of this bacteriophages then we prepare a combination of bacteriophages or phage cocktails based on uh, of based on our research interest so the picture here is a spot test plate uh, the, the clearance is uh, due to bacteriophages and this is a beautiful image from uh, agar overlay plate uh, this uh, blocks are due to the presence of bacteriophages against the bacteria in the plate so as i said uh, we are using different animal models for uh, bacteriophage research one of the uh, one of the very interesting and uh, very first and a novel study which uh, myself and my team did is using simple uh, whole animal inf infection models to study the efficacy of bacteriophages uh, galeria melanola is also known as wax moth larvae you can see this uh, small worms we used these worms to study the efficacy of bacteriophages uh, so that uh, these uh, results can be taken taken to uh, mice or uh, rat or human trials so that the efficacy of bacteriophages can be tested at the initial stage inside the uh, in vitro conditions so these are our results when when we when we used this uh, wax worm we found a uh, uh, different uh, dosage of uh, bacteriophages like escherichia phage and klebsiella phage had a different uh, uh, ability to treat uh, this uh, bacterial infections and the other other important model which we recently started using is uh, c elegans uh, which is commonly called round worm and we used a uh, liquid based assay to study the, the efficacy of bacteriophages in a c elegans model this is one of this this is one of our first study and i think it, we are we are yet to publish this uh, report and we very interestingly we did both both therapeutic and uh, prophylactic studies using this uh, animal model and we found a uh, very very interesting results and uh, these data are uh, yet to be published so the, the other concept which we uh, which i worked uh, last month in vit is using uh, fluorescent dyes to coat this uh, c elegans to see whether these bacteriophages are entering inside this c elegans you see this uh, beautiful images of the c elegans which are uh, stained and photographed using a fluorescent microscope uh, the, the green ones are uh, coated with uh, cyto 13 dye and the blue ones are dapi dye uh, you can see this uh, Worms are being uh, coated with uh, fluorescent dye because these uh, worms are uh, being treated with bacteriophages, which means that these bacteriophages are entering inside this worm so that uh, this uh, glittering uh, bacteriophages inside the EC elegans can be seen. And this is a very, very, uh, very first and a very recent study which, which, which I did in VAT uh, last month. So these are some of my publications on uh, bacteriophage side. 
So this is uh, this is our first study on a Galeria melanella, which was published in uh, BMC Microbiology in 2016. And uh, very interestingly, uh, during my uh, PhD, I, I, I developed a method to lay flies or uh, prepare a phage powders uh, to use these phage powders for therapeutic purpose. This is a very first study. Uh, which we published in a uh, scientific reports and we we also paid we, we have also patented this uh, novel and uh, new uh, lyophilization technique to uh, lyophilize back to features so this is a very recent study which we published last year uh, in which we found whether this bacteriophage therapy can be used as an alternative for secondary bacterial infections during during the pandemic so this was published last year and uh, we we wrote a small review on a bacteriophage encapsulation and delivery system and uh, this human microbiome journal publication is the one which I said earlier about the uh, uh, mother mother child uh, transmittance of bacteriophages during childbirth. Uh, what what we found is uh, this uh, gut uh, bacteria and uh, gut bacteriophages in the mother is transmitted to the child through placenta during childbirth. Uh, this is a very interesting report uh, which we published this year. So these are the other publications and other applications of bacteriophages to published recently and uh, this is my lab, this is my personal web page if you want to know more about bacteriophages or uh, treatment options which is available for bacteriophages you can always uh, come and look into my uh, web, uh, personal page so that you can get all the updates on my research and uh, bacteriophage therapy research all over the world so i would like to thank uh, my, my postdoc mentor uh, professor sebastian uh, from China and uh, very very special thanks to Professor Ramesh from BAT who, who who introduced me to this uh, beautiful concept of antibiotic resistant and bacteriophages uh, uh, BAT will do. Thank you so much. Thank you Dr. Ramesh. That was indeed a neat presentation. So that is a word that can be used. Very neat presentation that even a student who doesn't know the meaning of bacteriophage can understand what exactly it is. So thank you for such presentation. And any doubts from the side of students or staff are most welcome. So if you have any doubts, can come forward. If there are any doubts, you can type in the chat box so that we can check in. Are there any doubts from the side of students? We can just check in out. From the part of staff member, do you have any doubt? So if Dr. Prashant, I will ask a question to you yeah. before any, anybody could get an idea of what exactly it is. My question. Does this bacteriophages that you have been isolating and studying so far has any impact over the commensal flora of the body, the normal flora? Does it do anything to the normal flora? No, actually bacteriophages are very, very specific to a particular uh, bacterial host. So whenever we do uh, in vitro studies, we, we see whether this bacteriophages has ability to infect a commensal uh, bacteria. So, so you, in case if it is uh, infecting a uh, common cell bacteria, we will avoid using those bacteriophages in our studies. So the bacteriophages which we use are mostly infecting a uh, human pathogen. So they are very, very specific uh, during treatment. Okay. So uh, the second question of the continuation, in case of the commensal flora, hope my question is clear. In case yeah. of the commensal flora, turns to become an opportunistic pathogen. Right, so its situation becomes prompt for it to convert itself to an opportunistic pathogen. In that case, can this phage therapy come into existence or work? Because already you said yeah. commensal flora are more specific. I mean, the phages are specific with the pathogen, but commensal always has the ability to convert itself to an opportunistic pathogen. What does what to do in that case? No, in that case, what what we usually do is we use personalized therapy so whenever patients reaches us we will know what 
a bacteria is causing infection. We, we really don't care whether it's a commensal bacteria which has uh, which is developed into an opportunistic pathogen or whatever it is. So what we take is during diagnosis, we take a bacteria which is responsible for infection. Then we test all these uh, bacteria against the bacteriophages in our phage bank. Whichever bacteriophage is uh, showing activity, then we go for treatment. So this is how the treatment works. Okay. Any questions from the side of audience? I don't know if there are any questions. I'm looking at the chat box. If you have any questions to type, one or two, 